just keep an eye and from time to time the screen must be on. I don't know why sometimes suddenly it starts recording. Maybe you see a message or call or Okay, so for this practical, we don't we don't need to use the PC. Okay, and actually it's gonna be a bit challenging. So please try to focus. Okay, by closing your eyes and ears, and then keep listening. So this one is about entity relationship diagram. Okay, so today we are going to talk how, at least with this scenario provided, we need to draw a diagram for our database design. Okay, so this is about ERT, which is entity relationship. I'm sure this is most of you needs, I'm quite sure, or you are quite needs, right? I see some students come and then they have problem with the design, they don't know how to transfer or implement something. They don't know how to reflect that design on the database. So this is going to be important for you, at least to give you some cognitive, some understanding how you need to design your database based on the requirement that you have. Okay, so before I start, I'd like to really talk about the relationship between tables. I think we already mentioned two, one to one, and one to many, right? At some time. So I'm gonna brush up on them again fast, but these are important for your design. You need to understand what is the relationship between tables. Then inside your mind, you may try later to find or to think how I'm gonna reflect the requirement I have on the design that I'm gonna implement later on. Okay, good. Just save in time. So try to have a seat and test that. Okay, so the three types of relationship between tables, I think you should have already gone through this during the lecture. So we have one, one to one. Maybe you can try one to one relationship. We have one to many. Relationship. And we have many to many relationship. These are very important when you design your database to understand the relationship for your tables that you intend. Right, you already studied this, right? So should we? <laughs> okay. So what does it mean one to one? Of course this one one to many or many to one, same one. So if you have many to one or one to many, same as so just we have one to one, one to many, many to many. So let's start with one to one. Assuming I have a table about a student, or for example, so here I have included Maybe the ID of the student, name, okay, and maybe uh, address, for example, or age, age. And then I create an extra table to extend this table. So this is going to be extend also student for student details, say, or an extension. Where, for example, I put address. And other other ones. Okay? So now here I have ID. Of course, here I have to have an ID too. Each table must have an ID. Right? So now here I got student ID. Here I got student ID. But I need to link between these tables. So who is going to be referring to in this table? So this is the main table. This is the extension for the main table. Which column is going to be referring to? Do you need to add here student ID to link? No need. Because this ID and this ID are already the same. Should be the same. If I'm talking about student one, I provided his details, then, sorry, information, then here I come for the same student ID, I provide his details. Alright? It's logical. 
talking about them information here, then I shouldn't go and talk about you know someone else information. So I'm linking between them, right? Based on the ID. So this one currently is PK, primary key, and this one is also PK. But I'm gonna assign extra job for this ID. It's PK plus it's gonna be foreign key at the same time. So this is PK and foreign key. So in this case, I'm linking between these tables. And the relationship between them is one to one. So here can be one to one, I can say. Why? Because each student has only single record of the test. Right? Can I have more? No. Yes, theoretically, but since I have primary key, primary key doesn't allow duplicates. So if I assign to you ID number 10, then I put up your details here, sorry, your information, and I come here and put your details, same ID, right? I need to use same ID. Say the print, then here can. Can I add more details in the new report? Yeah. Because this is primary key. Primary key, remember, doesn't allow duplicates, correct? So you have an ID, I'm using same ID to provide you details. If you go to the other side, account, each student details is assigned or is for, is for only one student. Can I say this details is for student one and student 10? Cannot, so it's only for one, only one. So you can emphasize, you can say each student has one and only one record of details and each student details is for one and only one student. All right? So here, you see the relationship how it's one to one because I cannot have tier one again with extra details and I cannot come here also register the student same student again with the same ID so only one here one here this is one to one relationship clear okay now so now we're done with one to one this is one to one relationship now we need to go to one to many relationship Let's say I have book, book table. I have information about the book, maybe name or title, maybe year of publication, maybe number of pages, and so on. Summary, and so on. Okay? And I got another table for author. Actually, this one can be many to many, but let's assume let's assume that each book is written only by a single author, just for the sake of simplification for one to many. Let's assume that each book can only be written by a single author. We're not allowed to have co-author for a book. Okay. So here I got author ID, of course, also here. But all all of the ID you must have ID inside. So here I have author name, address, and so on. And based on the requirement that now I'm telling you that each book can be written by a single author. And each author can write many books. That's fine. The author can write many books. But each book can be written by a single author. So how to reflect that? So again, you need to write down this table. So each book written So each book You need to write down, by the way, how when you start the book. It's difficult for you to have everything processed in your mind. So you need memory somewhere, right? You need to also have this to start it up. So each book is written by single, not single parent, not single author, just one. And then each book, each author can write many books. Actually, you should already observe. The relationship already written inside this one. Single means one, many, right? One to many. So 
So how, once I understand this, now I come to the design. How can I reflect one to many relationship? I need to understand this, huh? By the way, first, you don't start design, you need to understand what is the problem, what you're doing. Because for each problem, the design may differ. There is no standard design, let's say for book and all that, that's all the time. It depends on the requirement that you have at hand. Okay? So for this one, how we can reflect this one? One to many relationship. Any idea? How? Each book has an author, one and only one author. 
then each offer can find zero alternatives. Okay? Maybe we are author of future. So we just our names now, now the future when we write a book, then we add our record. Clear? Is it clear for one to three? So this is one to many. Or many to many same concept. Now we come to the last one, which is many to many. I'm gonna use same one, but I need to use some space. Here, book ID and author ID. Maybe this is my favorite. That's it. Then, how this works for example, this is book one, as we said, C sharp, maybe 2022. 20, here, author is 100. And we said, blah, blah, and C. Now I got a second book, C sharp. Okay, also 20, sorry, C plus plus, say 2000. And we need many authors. Let's say I'm going to add one, uh, Jimmy. Now, assuming that this book has been written by both. Blah blah and Jenny, for example. Then it's very easy. I come here and say book ID 1, author ID 100. Book ID 1, author ID 101. Right? Now let's say this book is also written by the same people. Or we add a new one 102. Jacker. Then we come here and say book two was written by let's say blah blah and Jacker. So it's 100, 2, 102. Okay, so in this case we break up the relationship to represent many to many. Now in this case we have here many, as we said, we represent like this. If a book can be written, must be written at least by author. Book exists, that means there is an author for it. So maybe I can put one or many. So this means one or many. One author or many. And same here, author can write maybe in this case we say zero or many or one to many. That doesn't matter. But we need many to many. So here you can also put one. Okay? So you see? So this is how you represent many to many relationships. Based on the requirement, always you need to check the requirement. So the requirement for second one here it says many, and here many. So that means this is many to many relationship. 
Clear? So this is why you need to understand requirement and how you do representation for your requirement in your database design. Is it clear? Any question? So in this case, we have talked about one to one, one to many, many to many. Those are important, those like NPC. When we talk about database design, you should know. In addition to primary key, prime key, unique key, and so on. Those like ABC. You have to Okay? Any question? And then now we go and start with our article. So for first question, it says the company has number of employees. Each employees, each employee may have may be assigned to one or more projects. So we have employees, we have projects. We have employees, we have projects. Now what it says, each employee may be assigned to one or more. You need to make note about the requirement. Or may not be assigned to any project. Okay? So each employee may be assigned, in other words, to zero or more, right? So or may not be assigned to any project. So what does it mean? I mean each employee may be assigned to zero or more projects. Right? Once here it says may not be assigned to any. A project must have at least one employee assigned. So if you have a project, that means you have at least one employee assigned assigned. You must have Assigned. And may have any number of employees assigned as well. So one or many, right? Because it says any number. So it may be also many. Each employee has a unique number assigned required to store his or her name and age. So these are the details about the table. Correct? So we may think in this case I have an employee table. We can just write it here as a design. I don't need to have a table with all the information. So it says we need to have a unique ID, right? So we need to have ID. Okay? Or just you can say the ID, any name. And then we need also to have his or her name. Okay? We may have either just one, one record, I mean one column for name, or maybe you have last name, first name, so maybe you have first name, so I think it is capital, so you can say that name, or, and also the other thing. First name and last name, right? And then also we need age. So for age, either we can write here age or date of birth. We can request from the user to provide date of birth. Which one is more suitable, do you think? If I ask him just to give me age as a number or date of birth? Sorry? Date of birth. Why? More accurate. Sorry? More accurate. More accurate. How? You are correct, but how? Sorry? Yeah, I wanted to change because he inserted this year his age is forty. Next year is gonna be come forty one. So how how would I know? But if I take date of birth, easy I can calculate, find out the age. So it should be here. We can add view of date of birth. Right? Anything else? Employee spelling grade may vary by project. So at least now we know what is we got for employees. So again, we have employees and we have projects. Maybe we have any details about the project? Is it 
name. Each project is given a distinct name, right? So of course we need to have project ID, correct? So we, we may have project ID, and then we have project name. says something about the cost, right? It says about the bidding rate for each project may differ or may vary. Yeah, well it doesn't say here about the cost but each month. Right? So each project is given a distinct name and estimated cost for each project will be stored. So also we need to have cost, right? According to the requirement. So we can have here PSC estimated cost, correct? That's what the requirement says. And estimated cost of each project. So now for each project, I can have project ID. This is gonna be PK, of course, primary key. This is gonna be also primary key. So I got employee ID, first name, last name, or age, and then And let's, here it doesn't say gender, but just the solution provided by the picture you have to know. So, anyway, it depends on the requirement. Okay, now back here to the requirement that it says. I need to find, I need to assign employees to project, right? I need to assign employees to project. So let me see what they say. Each employee can be assigned to zero or more, or zero or many projects, right? It says here one or more, or may not be assigned to zero. So in other words, each employee can be assigned to zero or more uh, projects, right? So each employee must be assigned to zero or more. I'm just translating what's written, right? But this is not gonna work for some time. Let's see. Have the money. Okay. And the project must at least be assigned to one employee or many, right? Or any number of employees, one or many. So the relationship between these two, two tables, what is it? In this case gonna be sorry. Again, according to the rules, it says each employee may assign to zero or many projects and each project can be assigned to one or many projects uh, to one or many employees you see I've already thought, said many many twice so the relationship between these two tables is many to many correct? right? so here because you see many more means many or also here may assign to any number means many any number can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 100, means many. So in this case, I cannot have direct relationship. Correct? So I'm going to have a new table. We already explained why many to many relationship will be the third table. So I'm going to create a new table here. You can call it assignment. Any name should work. But try to give meaningful name. At least you know later when you come back that this table is wrong. Okay? Now, what I need to do, I need to include the employee ID. And project ID, right? We already talked about many to many. So I'm going to add also here project. In addition, I need one more fill because it says here. An employee's billing rate may vary. May vary from one project to another. So based on the assignment, in other words, every time I assign an employee to a project, I may bill a different billing rate. Alright, so where assignment happens in this table. Then I come here and write billing rate. Zero. Let's say 
right? Understood why I put it here? Why did I didn't put it right here or here? Because each employee may have different billing rate. So maybe I take data employee one. I give him the billing rate. If I put here from five, because the billing rate will become like fixed for all projects, right? If I put bill rate here, that means the bill rate is same probably for all projects. And this is not true. Each project may have different bill rate, right? According to the requirement. So here, absolutely not. How about if I put here bill rate? Is it okay? In this case, the project has got the bill rate, correct? Let's say I put 100, the billing rate. Then I assign one employee. Let's say with 100 billing rate, so it's fine. The second employee, I decided to give him different billing rate. Then how? The billing rate is fixed under project. Okay, because here it says each employee's, where is it? Employee's billing rate may vary, can be different. But here I already fixed it for, for the project. So no matter if I, if I assign one or 100 employees, they're gonna have the same billing rate, correct? Which is invalidate the requirement. So also here, uh, so the best place is when I assign project to an employee, then I will provide the billing rate for that particular assignment. Here? So this is why I have to put this right here. Always you need to use an argument, why, why? Otherwise you won't be able to design. You need to know what would happen if I put here. You need to ask yourself what would happen. If I put here, what would happen? And so on. Only then you will start to understand how to design. Then it's okay. Let's say I made a mistake here. Once I'm developing, oh, now I cannot make it there. If I want to put it there, then I remove it and put it inside the cell. Now this is many to many relationship, so I need to have here, remember this, and this, but we're not done yet, we need to find what is zero or one, and etc. So here it says the project must have at least one employee. So if I come to the project and assign it to someone, at least one must have one employee. So I need to put here one, right? One or many, right? If you have a question, ask. We get the chocolate. Okay. Anything else? So here it says, and how about employee? Employee may be assigned or maybe not to any project. Right? So in this case here, we're going to need to put zero. According to the question, it says the employee may be assigned or maybe not. May never be assigned to any project. So it has to be zero or many. Okay? The last one here, we need to put annotation. Each assignment, each assignment, each single assignment to how many projects can be linked to? One project, right? So in this case, I need to put one and only one. In this case, you can do it like this. You can write down this is one and only one. So each assignment can be given to one project. Like for example, I assign your friend to a certain project. Then I need to put her ID here. The same employee is 10. Project ID is 200. Right? So each assignment in this case is assigned only to a single project. I cannot write okay, 200 and 200 and 200. Enough. Okay, how about here? Each assignment say, should be assigned. Right here it says the assignment for a certain project for billing grade because I have billing grade for each employee. You can keep it in mind. It should be to one and only one employee. If I need to assign second, then I can assign another one, right? A different billing grade and so on. So each assignment is given to one and only one employee and to one and only one project. Okay? This is for question one. Again, if, you, if your lecture provided you the solution, this one can be written like this, as I told you earlier. 
or a mutation. They have same name, but some people do different annotations. So this one, if you don't put those uh, vertical lines, then you need to write here one dot dot one. And then here you need to write one dot dot as a. So just you put link, in this case, just link like this and write this. For this one, you put link and write here zero dot dot aspect, here one dot dot one. Same way. So either this annotation or the other annotation. You don't need to have both on a single diagram, just choose one that, that is okay and follow up. The rest of the Any question for first question? That's it. We're done with the first one. So always read the requirements and try to understand. How to understand? By knowing, let's say, the entities. So this is we call it entities. We have employee, we have project, and how each employee is assigned to the project and how the project is assigned. Then once you understand this, then you can have you can start drawing your VR. If you don't understand, you won't be able. Maybe just you draw entities, but it's gonna be difficult for you to determine the relationship. So you need to know, understand the relationship. So have the entities, okay. I have project, I have employees, but how projects are assigned and how employees are assigned. Okay? Okay, so let's continue. So some college, after us, is divided into several schools. So now we have two types of types. We're not working with the same example, so I'm going to Okay. So for this one, uh, question two is long. It's all about one yard. Again, that's why I told you this is challenging, but it's important for you. Later, you can find it useful when you start your writing. If you haven't done so yet. Okay, so Alcaraz College is divided into several schools School of Business, School of Arts and Science, School of Education, and School of Applied Science. So we're going to have entity for school, right? So we're going to have entity for school. Okay, so what it says? It says each school is administered by a dean, okay, who is a professor. And each dean can administer only one school. Okay, I would say it's better if you try to have a skill reading the requirement, at least all you know what you have. Then you, because now we have we have we have a dean, right? So we may think at first like we have a separate entity for now, maybe staff, but this is later is gonna we only focus on professor, so there is no other staff. Either you can call it staff, but since this example is only focused about professor, then we call this entity professor. Now it says that we're going to have, of course, you need to have an ID and set up, so you can write here school ID or school code. And of course, here we have, let's say, prop code or prop number. I'm trying to follow the same thing for. So later, when you refer back, you understand. I want you to come up with new names. Okay? So we have prop number, of school code, and then since we have several schools, we need school name, then we can have also a school name. Okay? And for props, we can have the 
say those kind of it's up to you what to add because the question here doesn't say the requirement doesn't say but just we put like general one like each school has school name all right each school has school name and each person has a name person and last name so you can add up this by yourself now we need to define the relationship between professor and school so we need to read the requirement we don't know is it one to one one to many or many to many so we look, each school is administered by a dean who is professor. Okay? That means by a single dean. Correct? By a single person, by a single professor. And each professor can, oh sorry, each dean can administer only one school. Correct? So now what we have in here, but not all not all professor must can. Just say can. It doesn't say must administer, right? If you just say can administer, that means some of them may not administer any school. Correct? Correct? Now what how we need to represent this? We're saying each school can be administered by a professor. A professor may or may not administer the school. Alright? So what you need to do in this case? If we add school code here, this is can be one solution, I would say. But since not all professors are administered, then it's going to be waste. I mean, the column is going to be almost empty. How many things we have in this university, for example? Ten? How many schools? Ten? How many professors we have? A thousand? Right? So most of the column is going to be empty except for maybe 10 records or 10 professors, right? Correct or not? So actually can, I would say if you write here, according to you, school code can, but it's not the optimal one. How about here? One I'm inserting, once I'm inserting the information about school, I assign professor. So you can have prof code here, or you may have it up to you. But I would say this is more optimal because here not all professors they gonna have code for the school. Right? If I put here school school code, this is also a feasible solution because once I have the information about the professor, I can check this field to see if, if a certain professor is assigned to a school. Right? Yeah. But as I said, maybe I have two thousand. Sometimes in order to understand the concept, I like to exaggerate. Here you may exaggerate now. But in real life, like some people ask me, like he tells you, I, I haven't slept for days. Sometimes I ask myself, how come you didn't sleep and you're still here you now talking to us? But he meant that he slept very deep. Right? So there don't exaggerate. Here, it's okay, exaggerate. So let's say we have one Indian officer. Impossible, just exaggeration to show you the idea. And then we have only 10 schools. That means I'm going to have almost more than 999,000 records which has no school code inside the database. Right? So almost the column I checked is going to be almost empty. Or literally empty actually almost. Right? Because only for 10. So what is 10 for one year? Nothing. But if I do here, let's say I register 10 schools, then immediately I can assign <coughs> their professor, their needs. Correct? So there's no wastage here. But here, yes, you may have wastage. Because there are many rows which has no school code. For many professors, no school codes. Okay, so this is okay. I would say if I'm, if I'm, the, if I'm marking your assignment for an event, I would consider this, and I would consider this, but this, maybe I give more marking. 
higher levels, for example. Or I may use the board itself. So for design, I need for implementation wise both are okay. But for let's say saving storage on the device, this might be more optimal. Okay? I hope you got it. Take mount and exaggerate more. That's the that's what the professor. So now in this case, we may choose this one and write here. This is called code and I need R and I. Okay? Now the relationship. The relationship. So each school, as it says here, each school is administered by a dean. By a dean. All right, that means one and only one dean. That's a single dean. So in this case, here, I haven't defined the relationship on the other side, so I can't put this one. Each school can be administered by only one, one and only one professor. Okay? On the other side, each dean can administer only one school. So each dean can administer one or no school, right? Because not all, not all, because here it says can, can administer. So not all of them, where is it? Uh, I lost my cap. Each dean can administer one school, but may not, right? Not for all. So here we can put zero or one. Zero or one. So each professor can administer zero or one school at max. He cannot be dean for two schools, for three schools. Only maximum one or no. He's not dean for any school. That's all. And each school can be administered by one and only one professor. Also, you can write the name of the relationship so easy for you to write, to read. Dean of. So each professor, sorry, yeah. Professor can be or is a dean of zero or one school, and the school can be administered by one and only one professor. Okay? Awesome. Do you like to start somewhere? Uh, for this relationship, if you have higher, we go with this, if you have higher, but if you don't have, then no need. Maybe later I'll like, find an example. This is for higher. Like for example, categories, this can work. If you have high category, let's say under computer science, then maybe you have other subcategories. Then under EIS, you have other subcategories. Okay? Then in this case, you can insert those all categories into one table, and then make those occur the ID of CS. So like as, as you will. You have this, and then you have like this. Recycle. Mean hierarchy. That means you have hierarchy. Maybe later I'll show you some more of the example. Any other question now for this? Sorry. So for your case, no need, because there is we're not talking about any hierarchy. Okay, so if it's not global, the professor or let's say it's a staff, then you need to start Okay, this is for about staff. Then I need to see the requirement. It's still not money for that one. Unless if I need to talk about hiring, like like me, um, let's say uh, under under position, under another one, who is a manager or maybe is hired, like like head of department. If I need to have this hierarchy, like who's what my position is, let's say head of department. Above head of department is let's say the vice dean or the duty dean. Then above is dean. Then above I don't know what they have. Then the vector or the president of the university. How you can represent this hierarchy inside database? You don't need to have, for let's say, uh, in this case, lectures one table, and then you have another lecture, another table for for department head of department, another table for dean, another another table for the duty dean, another table, and etc. You don't do this. You have one table, but then you create hierarchy. So, for example, that's very fast. I'm just the question. If I have here staff, then here I got staff ID. 
then I can say this one is managed by or let's say the higher ranking, okay, the higher ranking, the boss ID, let's say. Then let's say I come, let's say the president, president has no boss, right? So here one, then here and two, that's fine, because this is going to be for you, right? Then let's say come, uh, what they call it? I don't know, let's come you. Then two, my country. Here I wrote one. Because I need to refer. Then how can I reach the information? For one, I go to the same table and the data report the one. Then under this team, there is head of department. Then two. So this is how we represent IOT. In other words, the foreign key is referring to the primary key of the same table. Okay? Anyway, this is just our so for this one, no need, since we're not talking about hiring. Okay, good question. Uh, for this case, no need, because they didn't mention anything about hiring. But since they mentioned here that the dean should be a professor, so I wrote says, each school is administered by the dean who is professor. So we already have professor. If you like to have information about it, as you are actually in has provided, then you can have the same of rank. For example, pro rank. Just to say whether he's assistant professor, maybe associate professor, good professor, and so on. The ranking of him, right? Yeah, so here are other details also provided, like top email. But here again, the question doesn't say. So this is why this is a sample. Whatever I write here, but the key, key things that I discuss with you, like where to locate the point? What is the relationship? How to read the relationship to identify? Is it one to one or one to many? And so on. These are key things. But the detail, if they don't mention, then it's not. It depends, it's up to you what to add up. Okay, since here they didn't mention email, then up to you, right? Fair or not, this will be extra. Okay? Any question? Okay, then we move on. So for your question again, if they mention about hierarchy, then you may think about that one or the one that you get. But since here they didn't mention. Okay. Now we move on. Each school is composed of several departments. So now we, we need also to define departments. So for example, the school of business has an accounting department, has management or marketing department, economics, finance department, and computer information system department. Okay? Then in this case, we're going to have another entity or department. And then we have department, let's say, code or ID. Okay, so here before I forget, it's important also to, to write that what is foreign key and what is primary key. So, so far, we have this is PK. This is PK, this is PK, primary key. This is important for PK as well. And this one from code, what is going to be? Foreign key. Because we need to link with that one. So this is going to be foreign key. Okay? These are important for UK, huh? So the entities, any information mentioned inside the question, like name, for example, was important. The relationship and this limitation. Is it one to one or one to many and so on? I would say those are the key things. The rest, whatever information you need to add up for a professor, I can add email, address, etc. etc. It's easy. But the main design with uh, skeleton, let's say, we need to focus on. <coughs> now we go to the second question. Yeah, so we're talking about departments. So each department we already created. Now, what it says, each school has a department, right? And they have one or many. As it says, it's composed of several departments. Okay? So now in this case, in this case, we may we may be interested to link 
and we should actually list it between those. Of course, here since we have names for department, we may also do to add department names. Again, this is primary key, it's going to be EK. And now we need to link between each school and department. So the school can have many departments. Alright? How about the department? The department can be linked to how, to how many schools? Only one. Alright? So the department is linked to one school. It doesn't, it doesn't say here, but let's assume since it doesn't say, and actually that is what's going on. Each department is linked to one school. So where we need to add the foreign key? Is it in the school? We write here department school, or we write department school code. Which which option? Option one or option two? Either option you need to think reasonably. If I put here department code, what's gonna happen? If I put here department code, what's gonna happen? You need to ask yourself. If you don't answer, you won't be able to. If I put here, that means each school can be linked to how many departments? Only one. Right? Each record inside school table, you need to provide one code for the department and only one code. Can you write two codes? So you three, ten, and up. Unless you write here department code one, department code two, department code three. But again, this is not, not preferable. Because you don't know how many departments, maybe 10, maybe you say now 5, in the future maybe they say we've got 10, then go to the system and modify, add department code 6, department code 7, department code 8. You see this never ends. And not to mention wastage or storage in your device, because you have many columns, most likely going to be empty. Some school may have only two departments. Okay? So you need to reason. If you don't reason, you won't know. So this is okay, it can be. As a solution, I would say it's not optimal where you create department code one, department code two, department code three, and etc. But this has many disadvantages. And etc. Can. But it has many disadvantages. Because now let's say they say so the maximum number of departments for the school can be five. In the future, maybe they come and say no, now it has become ten. That means you need to go to the design, modify, go to the screen, modify, go everywhere, modify. So it's not the same. So this is okay, but not optimal. Half solution. So how about if I put the school code here? Would that be better? Let's let's think. I created a department, then I assign the school code to that particular department. End of the story. Right? Correct or not? So again, you need to read the relationship. Each school can have one or many departments. Each department is assigned to one and only one school. So one to many relationship, we know this. And then where to put where to put current key, here or there, then you need to reason. We said if you put here, then you need to add many columns for current key. If you put here just one current key, you're gonna have. Okay? Now we identify the relationship. As it says, a school can have uh, many departments. Okay? So we can put one or many. So each school can have at least one or many departments. Okay? How about departments? Departments is linked to one and only one school. The department cannot be following two schools, only one. Clear so far? So you can write here for example, like my or a minister, whatever, just a name for the relationship. Okay, now we move on. I think we have to hurry. We need to finish this. Each department, at least we start to get the idea how to reason. Then if you have a question, you may go at my office or send it inside the team so everyone can so I may try to go faster. Now a department may offer 
several classes. So now we may have also class entity. So we're going to have class entity. Okay? okay. So department, not the RK, I'm oh, sorry, there. Each department, yeah, each department may offer courses. Now we are talking about class or courses. Courses. I will skip the first one and put the other one. Course. And then, of course, we're going to have course ID or course code. Which is primary key, okay? We're done with this. Okay, now we read what else. Principle of marketing is a topic. If, for example, a Paris college had some departments that were classified and research only, these departments would not offer courses. So now we're trying to define the relationship between department and course. So the department may offer many courses, all right? This is what it says. Each department may offer courses, many courses, right? But department, okay? If classified as research, those department would not offer any course. That means the department can offer zero or many courses, right? This is at first, zero or many courses. Then we leave the, put the relationship here. Saying zero or one. Because this is what it says. Some department may be only for the search. Then they don't offer any courses. This is what it says. Okay? Now, of course, since we have courses, then you can have course title. Those are the basic uh, intuitive information you may have. Let's say course. Title, right? You may have description. You can add from yourself. I mean, this is not. I think this is not compulsory, but it's good to have. At least have some would be compulsory. But what you like is up to you, because the question doesn't say. So we don't have crystal ball to figure out. But at least use that for the part. Okay, now we come here. So each course can be offered by how many departments? Sorry, yes? Each course, now we identify the relation between department and course. How about course and department? What is that? So course and department. Course, how many course? Yeah, one or or zero. Why? Actually, here it says one. But some courses, oh yeah, in case the course is offered, then yes, it's one and only one actually, not zero. If the course is already here, it doesn't come from the start. So it should already be offered by department. Or only one department. Okay? Because here it should have said something. Those departments will not offer courses. It doesn't say, but each department may offer courses. It doesn't say that the course can be offered by many departments. So you cannot assume the many relationship. Because it doesn't say. If it says that a course can be offered by many departments, then you put many. Okay? Yeah? Like now, the course, new time may be different. So but at least this question. Because there's, there's a courses between offered by two faculty. Right? So I'll not mix up. Well, at least this one does the same. Okay. Now we come to the foreign key. Where we need to put the foreign key? For the department, of course. Do we need to put department code here or course code here? Here, course code. If I put, as you said, So, 
thank you to your friend, he suggested to use horse code. But what would happen if I think that the department has over many horses? Then in this case, I have to have one column for course code one, course code two, course code three, four, and this never ends actually. Departments may offer many courses, maybe 100. So would you like to have 100 foreign keys? How about the other side? If I put here, department four. You need to reason. So your, your friend is correct. You need always to reason. You cannot know just by saying, oh, this sound. No, okay, okay. Lecture is in this is the time and you You need to think why. Because they are not going to be with you when you go to work. Right? You work in environment. How about this? Do I need to have the same problem? Department code 1, department code 2, department code 3? No, right? So which one is better in this case? This one. Right? So you need to reason. If you don't reason, you won't learn. I'm not sure at first here, department code. But say, how about if I have many departments? If I have, the department has offered many courses. So how my design will look like? If not clear, please say so. I can't help you. Perfect. So this one is going to be correct. Okay, now we move on. A department may offer several classes, so we have class in three. Okay, and of course, since we have class, then we need to have class four. All this. Always you need primary key inside your table. Now each of those classes is told by a professor at a given time in a given place. Very well. So each class, so again, first the department may offer many classes of the same course because now we need to define a relationship between these two. The class is based on the course, right? So what it says, for the course, you may have many classes. And each class, in turn, is by a professor. It's taught by a professor. So keep this in mind. Or you can write it down or highlight. So now we are defining the relationship. So here it says, department may offer several classes. So at least now we know the course, which is offered by the department, right? It may have several classes. Many. Correct? At least according to so far information given to us. Okay? And each of those classes is taught by a professor at a given time. So in this case, what I need to have, I need also to define a relationship between professor and class. Now we're talking about the relationship between professor and class. So now the question comes in. Let's read first, and then we'll come back. Where are we done? Now, one and only one, this is important, of those professor chairs, chairs the department. Now we are mixing again with the department. And the professor is not required to accept the chair position. So forget about this for now. Since we're talking about classes, can be taught by a professor? Let's focus here. It says the course can be taught by a professor. Then we need to assign Professor to the class. So where we need to put the foreign key? Is it we need to put here? Pro code as foreign key, or I need to put here class four. Always you need to ask. Now don't say this is this is a semi or a I'm sure you need to ask yourself which one is proper. Ask yourself, don't stop and stare. If you stare, you will die. Now check me. Class. Then let's reason and see. Your friends are just a few. Let's see. If I if I assign a professor to a class, here how many classes I can assign each professor? 
this design, single class. If I need to assign them more than one class, then I have to go with the same reasoning I told you with class code one, class code two. And this may never end. Right? But if I go here, each class already says is taught by single professor. So the class here has only one purpose. That's it. End of the story. Then this one is better, as you can see. Very good. So I can see now you have started to reason. If I make it challenging, say, the class also can be taught by many professors. Then what do you need to do in this case? Very good. Now you see, it became master. If you have any problem, come back to it. For all the FYP now, they're gonna go up at your place. You won't be able to write to the sun. Okay, so now we write what code here. And we may have anything else. Yeah, so it says he can be given at a specific time. Given time, so we can add here class time. We need class time. Okay. For location, we're coming into it because now we don't know about yet about the location because we're coming later. You see, there's a section about defining buildings and rules inside the faculty or inside the university. Okay? But here it has added class section. Actually, I'm not sure about this class section. It doesn't say anything, but here in the, this one they added class section. Currently, I see a uh, no meaning because since they didn't mention what is class section. Okay, now the important part is the relationship. We have to identify the relationship between course and class and class and professor. Right? So now each of those, so the department may offer several classes, right? So the department may offer several classes. Of course, through the courses that we have. So the department has put a course, course is, can have many classes. So in this case, what do we need to do also? What do we need to do? Do we need to put here the class code or course code here? Because we need the relationship between these two data. So same idea. We need to have here course code, not, not class code here. Because the course can be and have many classes. Then you need to have here code class ID 1, class ID 2, class ID 3. Then you stick this one and say here, you put it here as well. So you have course, course code. This is also part B. Define the relationship between class and course. And then the course can offer can offer many classes or can offer zero class. Maybe this course has not an open any class for a particular course. So zero or any. If a class exists, let's say you check you need to bid for next semester. If a class exists, that means the course is gonna be related for one and only one course. Right? Any question? Right. Now for a professor. So each class is taught by a professor at a given time. So we already have to put forth very well. Then it must be put the relationship. So maybe I'll put it here because we still need some space for all the words. So each professor or each class can be taught by, by how many professor? Each class, one and only one. Right. Then we have here one one. One and only one professor. But professor, we kind of come to this relation, I think it's mentioned somewhere. It's gonna be many, but we're coming to this one. So just for now, put zero or one. But why zero? I mean, if we have professor inside the university, why is not teaching anything? Because here it says, the second one, a professor may also be a research contract and teach more classes. 
Okay, so in this case, we may have zero. You may have professors working as a staff, but they teach no class because of this. They teach no class because they are working for research. Now another book here it says each professor may teach up to four courses only. Each professor can teach up to four. Here we have put how many? Many. Right? Then if you like to have restriction as a notation of this one, then you can type here zero or four. That means maximum four. If you like extra notation. This is later because of the design of ground point of view. Anything. But in Oracle, you can create restriction on your table. So every time you do you intend to insert class and you try to assign a professor that has already exceeded the number of classes assigned to him, then you can reject that on database level. Okay? But this is not much here by adding 20 or whatever, nothing much. It's only later you can add what, what we call it rule restriction, business rule. You can define a side of it. If you are interested, you can search on the internet how you can create rule restriction on your table. Okay, so now we're done also with this one. See? That's why I told you from the beginning, it's more challenging. SQL is much nicer, right? It's lovely. Okay, now we go on. The student may enroll in several classes. Now we have also student in. Now find a student A in the picture. So we have student. Student in B. Of course, we're going to have student ID. Maybe student for whatever, STU for. It's going to be primary key. Then, of course, you can have student last name for some simple information. Student first name. Okay. Initial, like this one. Anyway, this one, since the question doesn't say, then it's up to you. I would assume you can have. But always follow your lecturer. So you can ask your lecturer for this kind of question. Okay? For me, so don't say you said. They might be data something else. So since I'm not only the exam question, always refer back to your data for this course. If I'm the examiner, then I won't put much. but takes each class only once during any given time. Please highlight this. This is going to be a bit challenging. Each class only what I enroll, I mean the student can take each class only once during any given enrollment period. We're coming back to this. For example, during the current enrollment period, the student may decide to take five classes. Statistic, accounting, and the database of history, but that student would not be enrolled in the same statistic class five times during the enrollment period. But that student wouldn't be enrolled in the same statistic class five times, or even more than one time, because it says already you cannot. It takes each class only one. Okay, so five times, I think you just for example. Even two cannot, even three cannot, because here it says only once. Very well. So now we are defining the relationship between student and class. Firstly, the student can take many classes for now. Right? This is what it says. Many classes. So far. And then, in this case, at each class, may have up to 35 students. So each class can have up to 
to 35 students. So what this relationship here we have? As we gain? Many. Many, many. What we need? What we need to represent, what we need to have to represent 20 to many? A third table. So this one doesn't work. We need a third table. Because we have many to many relationships. Then we can have here a couple of table. It says enroll or student class view. Usually I follow by saying the student class, or you can type enroll. Okay. Now we clear why we have this table. So if you look here, why we have the whole table, then remember we have many to many relationships. Then we have to have a third table to break up many to many relationships. We get one to many, one to many. Right? So now we're going to have here, for sure, nobody is going to argue. For a third table, we need student code and class code. So we're going to have here student code and class code. These two are going to be oriented. So we have NK, you can write here. NK, NK. Foreign key, foreign key. Correct? And then we need the date when the student had registered or enrolled in this course. So we can write enroll date, for example. And here also they could be great. No date in the chat. Here we go. The important part is student code, class code. Those are important. Okay. <clears throat> now we come to the relationship. Now we know there is a relationship between this and with this one. There is a relationship. And of course it's going to be one to many, one to many. Right? So the course, the student can enroll. Here, I don't think it says anything. Right. Each department has a single student whose major is offered by that department. Each student has a single major and is therefore associated with a single department. However, in, in this college environment for us, it's possible at least for a while for a student not to declare any major in the study. Right? So it's possible for the student not to declare any major. This is for the relationship rate. This is for the time. Yeah, here we're talking about the life. So each department has several students. Wait, that's okay. Let's just finish this part. So again, a student may decide to take five courses, many, these many, but that student wouldn't be enrolled in the same statistic. The same statistic. Statistic class five times during the enrollment period. This is again goes to this one that the student can take each class only once during any given enrollment period. So now we come to this how to enforce this one to ensure that if the student has attended this class and this class is over at some time here, class time, right? It's over, let's say, for this semester. We have class time. Then how to enforce to ensure that the student cannot enroll twice for the same class? It's not about relationship. Relationship is already, but we're not determined yet, but we're talking about this one. If one to one, anyway, it's good. If one to one, then I need to represent here, can you add up student code, and then make student code private, which would actually is gonna make things more complicated. Because I remember the example for one to one, like the case you have student, and then you have student details. Then here I have ID for student, this ID, this ID. Both are primary key and foreign key, this one at the same time. So this is PK, this is PK, and K okay, at the same time, this is PK. Same ID. Now if I put here uh, student code for the class, right? then that means the class has become tied up with the student. And that means I need to create many classes for each student. That means the class is meant designed for one student. 
So it doesn't work. That means I have to create for database, I have 400 students, then 400 classes. And you need 400 lecturers, and then the university the next day will, will announce uh, what they call it, they put a shutdown. No money to pay all those staff. But good, you see, always an increase. So ask, why not here? Why not here? And, so, and then you start, your mind start reasoning. And then you become faster, faster, faster. And then later you say, oh, this time should be here, should be here. Any other solution you like to recommend? So here, no? No, that's fine, actually, very good. I appreciate that. Okay. Now we come again for this one. Very simple trick you need to do. How about if I make those two as a single primary key? These two as PK. In other words, they call it composite primary key. What does it mean, composite primary key? That means you have more than one column, more than one column in your table, and these two tables collectively act as primary key. Those columns collectively act as one primary key. Let me give you an example. Then you understand. Okay. If I say again back to the example of book ID and student, sorry, the author ID. If you remember from the example earlier, let's say we have here book ID 1, author 100, book ID 102. How I need to prevent that the same book is written by the same author twice? For example, my writing like this. How do I need to avoid such record? Where you represent, where in this case you say that author has written book ID 1 and book ID 1. You do it because simply you have two reasons. Alright? Or same idea. You say that the book has been written by author 100 and author 100. Same author. Alright? How to prevent such duplication? These are two things. How to prevent such thing? Similar case. Can I help us to resolve this? Each class only attended, uh, the student can attend the class only once in a specific semester. Then I can ask, or I can tell the database, these two together act as primary. This is, we call it composite, composite primary key. In this case, because we know primary key doesn't allow the right? Since it's composite, if you say, well, why don't I put here primary key? If you put primary key or book ID, then none of these is going to be valid. The database is going to give you an error. Because you already associated the book with author, you cannot associate the same book even with another author, different author, you cannot. Even with different authors, you cannot. In this case, this will be accepted, this is cannot. But this is valid, we call it. Because the same book has been written by two authors. If you put primary key here, then you'll get the problem. Then you cannot. Same idea if you put primary key here. For author ID. That means the author cannot write more than one book. Also, it's not the same. So the idea is we come to PK. That means the database engine will raise error only and only if both values have been duplicated again inside the database. Not either one. Both of them. Okay? So this is the idea of composite primary. Since the class is offered for a semester and the student has already registered for that course or enrolled, right? Then we can have this two as composite, ensuring that the student cannot register one more time for the same class. So let's say I'm the student, I'm the student, and this is the course, or sorry, class. So I have registered, let's say my number is 101, and I have registered for the class 200. Then I intend to register one more time, 101, 200, then this case, 
because I have opposite arguments. It doesn't allow me to register twice for the same path, for the same class. Clear? Is it clear now the concept of primary key? Composite primary key. So primary key can be also created for one or more columns. Okay? So the idea if this trick, the one I highlighted, can be solved by adding composite primary key. In this case, it's going to be this one. And of course, these two are foreign key. This is one foreign key, this is one foreign key. How many primary key we have? Only one. Don't get confused, huh? I don't say pk1, pk2. Wrong. This is one primary key. Okay? Any question? Any question? Good, this session is recorded, right? So later you can play it slowly and come back to this. Okay, let's complete the rest. So now we're done with this until here. Now each student may enroll in up to six classes. Up to six classes. Now the relationship between student and enroll, as we said, is not the student can enroll to many classes, right? Or zero, so I think somewhere later we're gonna see zero. Yeah, some, uh, I think it doesn't say, right? But the student may not enroll for any class, you say. You just register, but I don't see that nearly written there. May enroll up to six, and each class may have up to 35. Yeah, so that just tells us about the capacity but it doesn't tell us what the logic I mean, the student can be attending the university and may not register any class yet, all right? It happens. Okay. Now, how about enrollment? Each single enrollment of these is gonna be attended by one and only one student, all right? For this breakup table. Right? 
So for a particular class, how many students can enroll? Only up to 35. Zero or 35. Okay? Because here it says each class can have up to 35 students. Now we carry on. Each department has several or many students. So now we're talking about associating departments with students. Okay, department with students. This one, this one. Let's see what it says. Each department has, may have many students. So many students. Whose nature is offered by that particular department. However, each student has only a single major and is therefore associated with a single department. Okay? So a student, how many majors? It can be linked to only one major, which is offered by department. In other words, the student can be can follow only one department. But the department can have many students. So always you need to look at the relationship of both sides. As a student, I can be attached to only one department. As a department, I may have many students. Okay? So in this case, what I need to have for department, I need to be a different color. Let's see. I'm gonna add up. Oh, just for color's sake. Now we play this game called Saint. Now we have a relationship between department and students. Okay, the, the student has how many departments? Only one. Then here we write one and only one department. The department, on the other hand, can have many students. Correct? Can have many students. So we put many or zero. Maybe the department is a new. Nobody yet has all of this Okay? What else? I wish just to finish. Each department has many offered, however, requirement of these for student not. So this is why why it's zero. Here, this one. Because it says for each student, sorry, this one. In Alcaraz College, it's possible, at least for a while, for some time, a student not prepared a major field of study. That means it's not linked to any department. Well, actually, it should be here. If not, it's going to have no department. I think this one may confuse you. Because the department, yeah, if the student didn't register yet, let's say the department is a new, then the department may have zero students. And then in the future, they come up in one. But again, at the same time, the student says the student may not be, may not have a department. But in case he has, because for he, yes, so it's correct. So in case you have, then it's going to be one or one department. Okay, so that means here what I need to do. I need to add a column saying department ID, right? So I need here department ID. Sorry, department code. Say or ID doesn't matter. The name column can be different between primary key and first. This is it. Now for this one, it says for a while the student may not have any any department. So, in other words, department code can be null for some time, for a particular student. Is it okay? Okay, because foreign key accepts null. Correct? So there should be no problem. Because remember, foreign key accepts null. No issue. Primary key doesn't accept. Foreign key, okay. Unique key, how about unique key? Unique key accepts only one. Two, null to none. So again, those like A, B, C, you need to know primary key, foreign key, unique key, relationship, one, one, one to many, many to many, and so on. Then your life becomes easier. So 
with all these that I face. Okay, now we carry on. Each student has an advisor in his department, and this advisor, and the advisor can have several students. But who is the advisor? The advisor simply is a professor. So we already have an entity for a professor. But not all professor advise students. So again, a student can have how many advisor? One. An advisor. You cannot have many advisors, only one. On the other hand, a professor or advisor can have many, many students. Right? So now another word, we're trying to define the relationship between student and professor. And the relationship is not many to many, then we don't need a third table or breakout table. We can continue with our normal tables. Just we need to define here. Now a student can be following how many professor or advisor? One and only one. Then we put one. But a professor on the other hand can have many Advisor, or he may not, he may have no advisee at all. This is what it says. Some of them, but not all professor advise to. So here it's going to be zero. Okay? Now also we're done with this one. The last one. Just hold on before you fall down. My data went back, it's not okay. Okay, each school is located in a building. Now we come to a building. Now we need a building. So we need to add somewhere. We don't see any place. Hard to I think I'm gonna use this side. Or maybe we take this off a little bit. So we have building code. We have building code. This can be appear here. Yeah, good. Building code. So I'm gonna just make it shorter so I don't need to write a lot. Each school is located in the building. However, the classes offered by a school might not be necessarily be in the same building. So, in other words, we need to build a link file. We need we have we should have a link between building and school, right? Because this is what it says. Each school is located in the building. So we need to define the building that where the school is located. The relationship is not here, but Make that up. So we have the field school and then the snake that goes to the field school. And also, the building, we're going to have rooms. We need to define rooms, but it doesn't say here because logically each building has rooms. And then we need to link the room to the classes. We cannot link class to a building. We need to link the class to a room. So we need to have another entity for room. So we're going to have room. Then we have room code. Always you need to have primary key, don't forget. It should be like, like your name. Then we're going to have the type. Here they add the type and maybe whether it's resort, resort to or hotel. Now 
now we need to link between these two. Room and bedroom. Right? So the building has rooms. I think there should be more, right? I feel like it's short. Just hold on. That's okay. Remember it was longer. So anyway, we have that thing in rooms. We're going to make this faster. Okay, so we need to link. We need to link who? Where we need to put the point key? Room or building? Should already be marked. Where? Do we need to put building, uh, building code here or room code here? Room, oh, right. Very good. I told you how many things go go to me. This is gonna be for a key. Okay? So in this case a room can belong to how many buildings? One and only one. This is clear and easy. Right now we can put them up. We can't have room belongs to two buildings. And then how about the building? The building can have how many rooms? Can have it says here zero or one. This why I feel like uh, this one is shorter. I remember I read that some rooms inside the building are oh, okay. This is the justification. I know I explained it. It says clear. I don't know if it's clear that some buildings do not contain classrooms. Yeah, so not all buildings may contain classrooms. This is why. They may have storage room, but may have no classroom. So actually this one you can think of it to make it more reasonable. This is classroom. Not any room. Of course we'll think got rooms, but not, not necessarily many classroom. Okay, so in this case it's zero or one. Now how about the relationship between building and school? This should be interesting. Here it doesn't say, but each school is located in building. But it doesn't say whether the building can contain more than one school. It doesn't say. Assuming that the building is occupied only by one faculty, one by school, one school, then we have one to one relationship. Right? Then we can add here, we can add here school code, for example. But if the school, the building, may contain more than one school, then this one not so good. What you need to do? You can do the opposite. Put the building code here. Then in this case, put the building code here. Let me see here. Did I reach anything? Building, building. School, school. Yeah, they don't. Not in case, like for example, if you go to USM, I was studying there. So there is one building, but they have two schools: School of Computer Science and School of Mathematics. Then this case doesn't work. It can work, but you need again to, to write school code one, school code two, school code three. So in this case, you may take this out. So if you like, just put it here for first time and forget about it. So if you wish, you can have another building, which actually I feel this is more feasible than this. But unless the school also has more than one building. Then again, this is a problematic. You see how requirements can change your design? So you need to read the requirements. If it says the school can be in more than one building, this also not, not going to be a good design. So you're going to have many to many relationship, and then you need to break the relationship by a third table. Okay? See how much we talk? Let's solve this one. So this is why design is not easy. Design. This is close like the architect. They did higher thing, right? And they sit down and just design something. And then they pass this design to the developer. The developer will just follow, create the tables, and etc. etc. They don't need to design. The usual company should hire architect or database designer. Then you should design this one. Especially if you are working on complex system. If it's easy system, of course they won't do that. I think we finished. I hope so. Yeah, so for this one in this case, if you need to add out the stuff part of the solution, 
for building four. So the school can have how many <coughs> building? Let's say A has actually in this case one and only one, but the building can belong to more than one school for this design. Maybe one or more, or maybe zero if the building is still empty and they haven't assigned. I think I'm done. If you have a question, you may ask. You have last two or three minutes. Don't forget your QR code. I hope I, I covered everything. I didn't forget. I hope I didn't forget. Professor. Yeah, there's one more relationship for, for professor and department. Because I think we mentioned somewhere the professor here. Each professor may teach up, and professor may also be a research worker. I think this one. Each department may have many professors. Yeah, we didn't do this. The relationship. This one. The last one, not this. Bear with me. Also, I might want to be confused. So we have professors and department. Okay. So it says, in short, we the professor can be following how many departments. So each department may have many professors assigned to it. Only one and one, one and only one of those professors here in the department and the professor is not required to accept the chair position. So in this case, there is a chairs. Actually, there is two relationships here in the same class. So for, for chairing the department, for chairing the department, so here we have prof anyway, we have prof for Okay, so for this one, for chairing can be zero or one. So a professor may chair zero or one department, zero or one department. At the same time, the department is chaired by one and only one professor. Correct? And last one, we have extra relationship, but it's not affected here. Oh, yeah, right, it's here. So, as it says here, each department may have many professors. Each department may have many professors. In short, we need to add here department O. And then this is another foreign key. So, here we got foreign key for both O, this one. And on the other table, we got another foreign key for department O. Each one explains different relationship. Each one explains different relationship. So for this one, I'm gonna assign again another relationship here. This one, I'm gonna write it for you to understand this chairs, and this one employees. So a professor is gonna be is gonna be employed by one and only one department, and the department can have many Professor or zero. Let's say the department is new and nobody is working. And zero or nine. So again, don't be confused. This one, pay attention because the question you have two relationships with the same table. Two relationships with the same table. Some people are smiling, they don't like thinking what to do. This is database design. So again, why I have this one here, this relationship, because of this. Okay, maybe I put here just a number to understand this for this. Okay, and this second relationship here for this. Okay, I think now it becomes clear, right? Because I got two for a key, then this one for this for a key, this two for this one. And now we say we have a key. Like me to stand with 